And the final of the three is the is leading indicator regression. And if you can find a leading indicator, it's worth its weight in gold. Because it's causal, causal modeling without having to make a second forecast. So what is a leading indicator? And how would you detect that you have one? Well, it's basically it's simple. If the leading indicator wiggles, after some time, the response variable will wiggle. Maybe it'll go up, maybe it'll go down, but they're linked. And because of the time lag, <coughs> excuse me, you can take known values of the leading indicator and leap into the future through the regression equation to make a forecast for the response. So what that would look like in terms of time series, for instance, you suppose that we have the two variables. We have the response and we have the leading indicator or what we think is a leading indicator. So the response might be, I'll exaggerate here, maybe the response to something like this. And so we see that something is influencing this and changing the value. Now if it turns out that the leading indicator was doing something like this we see the same sort of pattern after some delay this happens then that responds this happens that responds this goes down that goes down this goes up that goes up after a while that's the picture that would give us a leading indicator, an indication of a leading indicator. So if you're in this situation, you've got a very useful leading indicator, and if you convert these into a scatter plot, it would be y at time t and x at time t minus l, say, for the lag, where this is the lag, l. Maybe the leading indicator changes and three months later there's a response in your sales. In real life, how might this work? A classic example is suppose that you make sheet glass that go into windows and doors. <clears throat> if you have a record of housing starts in your area, in your sales area, you know that if somebody gets a permission to build a new apartment complex, after a certain number of months, they're going to need windows and doors, and you're going to be able to sell glass for the windows and doors. So that's a simple and uh, classic example of a leading indicator. The housing uh, permits, or the housing start information, is a leading indicator of the sales of your glass. And the graphical picture of the two time series might look something like that. And the, the scatter plot would look like our familiar kind of situation, only this might be, for instance, this particular point might be y at time 10, and it also might be x at time 6. And so in this case, L would be 4. There's a four-month lag between the, the cause and the effect. But that's the only difference. Once you're in this situation, you know, it's just a mechanical problem of finding the regression line that summarizes that data relationship. And you will have a forecast of y at a future time, let's say t is now plus l, is alpha plus beta times x at time t. So this is known and it'll predict L periods ahead. And if you want it to go one period ahead, it'd be T plus one, that's just going to be alpha plus beta X of T minus L. So this sort of relationship is just like causal modeling, only you have the luxury, you know, at this particular time, You've already seen this. You know what this, this value is. And so, uh, I'm sorry, if you're at, at, at this time, you will know what happens after L. And if you're right here, you'll know what's going to happen out here, L periods ahead. So that's, that's a leading indicator type of uh, analysis. So to summarize then, regression for forecasting 
starts by saying all those random bumps, the little zigs and zags, some of that may be predictable if you have more information. It, and the more information might either be old values of the thing you're trying to predict, that's auto regression, or it could be another variable which causes the predicted variable to change, but you have to forecast that other variable too, that's causal model, or you found a leading indicator which is a causal driver but you don't have to forecast it because you can look back into the known record to get the values for X to plug into the regression equation. That's leading indicator forecast. So all of those are ways that we can use um, other information beyond the time series approach to possibly make more accurate forecasts of something that we care about.